In common with most boats, the main bilge pump on Fair Isle is an electric one. As you can hear, it's working, but it's not coming on automatically, so that's going to have to be looked at. It's surprising how often these automatic switches fail, so it's definitely worth checking from time to time. As well as the electric pump, Fair Isle has a mechanical pump that's driven off the engine here by a couple of belts. It's a switch on the main control panel, you can switch that on and off but it mustn't run dry so it does have a little contraption in line here that detects if there's a vacuum and will switch it off automatically. The button is there in case you lose all electrics you can still keep it going. Of course if you're really in trouble and you've lost your engine as well as your electronics there's always the manual one. Every boat should have a manual pump of some sort. Do keep an eye on these though. They tend to have this big bellows type rubber diaphragm which uh, can easily get a hole in it and then they just won't work. Back to our electrical pump then, we should be taking them out periodically to make sure the strain is clear, but it was actually just cleaning the bilges, putting water down there, I noticed it hadn't come on automatically. Actually it's a, it's a good thing every now and again to, to put some water down into the bilge in some way and just check out these automatic switches because they're notoriously bad. So I'm going to take this one out and uh, have a look and swap it out. So it should all be solidly mounted it should be in line with the keel as well not across it so this sled will be going down that way it's good to have it all mounted on the sled obviously it just keeps everything in one place and makes it easier to lift out and check you should check the strainer obviously every now and again but you just you don't want stuff going down in the keel as well nowadays um, it's not so much paper on board boats it was always a problem in the past that uh, you had it knocked down and books and paper and charts and all that sort of stuff goes in becomes a mush and goes in there hopefully it's not as much paper on most boats now these days so that might not be an issue so we get this on there nice and solidly as so we need the electrical connections now they never give you long enough uh, wires with these things obviously you want to put the uh, the connector as high as you possibly can in the bilge so as is good it's mounted right up here just underneath the the boards this won't quite reach to there though because we've got very deep bilges here so there will have to be a connection somewhere so i'll just strip the ends of the cable So I think I've talked about it before in the solo and the uh, alternator uh, videos, but uh, I'll go through stuff again because it's nothing more important, I think, than good electrical connections on a boat because they're so difficult to track when, when things go wrong. Uh, so firstly, you'll all know that I'm uh, a great believer in uh, using some sort of dielectric grease. This is Tef Gel, uh, which will stop any corrosion or help stop corrosion. So I'll just put a little bit on there. Uh, all the connectors and really the only way to to connect wires on a boat is with uh, one of these things so this is a, a crimped uh, connector it's in a heat shrink which has got adhesive in it so when you heat it up it shrinks down and seals does the whole job in one easy to use and by far the best method you hear people say that uh, the best connection is a soldered connection and yes a soldered connection does give a very good electrical connection but it's a very bad connection to have on a boat with anything that moves around because the, the point at the end of the solder where it meets the wire is a weak point it's a, it means that it's the same as basically having single strand wire on a boat which you never have you always have multi strand wire on a boat uh, this is, is um, zinc coated marine wire multi strand uh, and by putting a lump of solder on the end you're basically making Making that bit single strand and any movement between that little bit where the solder the blob of solder is and the rest uh, it's all be concentrated there that movement and that's a weak point and it can break there so really not a good idea to solder things on a, on a boat we don't do that um, but what I will do is use these push it in it's nice and easy as I say and then you get that crimper and make it nice and easy it's the blue one so we've got blue just make sure they're pushed all the way in get it on the blue and give it a squeeze again make sure they're pushed all the way in squeeze until it clicks which it has that's it nice and tight so you just need to now do the heat shrink i've got a low torch here it's the only one that's self-lighting though this one's not just 
get this one going. This one's a little soldering iron, which is, is really useful. It just comes in a little, a little kit um, like that. So you can have a soldering iron end on it, but you can also just, just do this and then just drop that down and it'll uh, just give you a really little hot, hot little end in there. And you can put it up against it and shrink them all down. So as I said, this has got uh, adhesive inside it as well, so it shrinks down and holds and has the adhesive in there. So that'll all hold it really nicely and be a completely waterproof joint. So that's it, all shrunk down. So that should be fine. Let me just test it out, lift it up. There you go, that's better. Uh, what I'm going to do is just clip this, some cable ties all the way up the arm here, so that that joint that we've made is as far out of the water as it possibly could be, if we ever do get any water coming in here. And lastly then I'm just going to bring a loop of this up into there, like that, just as strain relief so it's just not pulling down on, on this bit here all the time. You can just nicely put that into there. Finally then, I'm just going to put an alarm in. We haven't got an alarm installed at all in Fair Isle, which uh, surprises me. Uh, but I've just actually bought these cheap ones. I've got a couple of them here, so one can go uh, back here in the aft parts in the aft cabin of the, the bilge and one in the saloon. And so it has a nine volt battery, it lasts forever really, and a little sensor on a long lead. So this can go up the top and I'll attach this to uh, the strainer and put it sort of down maybe a foot away from the, from the bottom or something, but we can test it out in a cup of water. Yeah, that's pretty loud. I think that would wake you up, worth having. It's surprising how many stories you get of people stepping out of their bunk straight into water, so having alarm is a good idea. There's lots more information on the website, and do follow along on Facebook and, of course, with the episodes of Sailing Fair Isle on YouTube. Thanks for watching.